All right, today we're back in the garage again and we're gonna continue working on my Jetta. So today's work isn't something that's typically maintenance. It's something that was a mistake that occurred and that happened because of me. So if we take a look at my wheels here, sadly, my three-piece wheels have some curb rash right over here. This happened while I was leaving Driven Show Ottawa. So not the best experience there, but at least they were nice and pretty for the show. Like look at the rest of my wheels. Things happen. So now we just have to go around and fix them. So what I think we'll do here is I'm gonna go get changed to get into some work apparel. We're gonna take the wheel off, clean the wheel, and I'll show you the step-by-step -step process of how to fix curb rash on polished lips, especially on three-piece wheels. And we'll go from there. Let's get the car jacked up, or at least to get the jack in the space. Take the wheel off, loosen all the lug nuts, and then go from there. Find the right socket for your wheels. In my case, this will be most likely a 1718. Uh, let's see here, 17 mil, 17, perfect. And then just a breaker bar to loosen the wheels. All five are loosened. It'll make it easier once it's in the air to take off all five bolts. Let's remember safety first. Here we have just a uh, block to put under the wheel and this will prevent the car from rolling back. Since we're raising the back of the car and we're not using jack stands, let's put one of these underneath to just protect the car from rolling and protect ourselves so we are not in a bad situation. My spare tire has barely been driven on, so it still has lots of tread. Now that we have the wheel off and we have a little bit better lighting, you can see the damage a little bit up close. Let's get this wheel cleaned off so we don't have any other contamination. And then I'll show you what tools we need and get to fixing this. What do we need to clean up these wheels before we fix them up? Pretty simple bucket, two brushes to clean your wheels. So I typically use these types of brushes and then some degreaser or something like that. So we have a citrus crush just from Parts Avatar, available at partsavatar.ca, and we'll clean it up and we'll go from there. So now that we've washed the wheel, let's dry it up and get it back inside. So what do we need in order to fix the damage on the wheel? First off, we need a rotary tool. Here I have a simple JobMate one. This will do the trick. We do have others available on partsavatar.ca. Up next, we need some bits for the rotary tool. This including a aluminum oxide bit. This will help us file the wheel down and get it nice and flat. And then once we finish with that, we need some sanding discs. So this is basically just sandpaper. I have them on discs. I utilize these sanding discs for my 90 degree angle drill. I have this Ryobi one here. We do have a multitude of different products and power tools available on partsavatar.ca as well. You don't need sandpaper just like this. You can just get regular sandpaper, sand and then wet sand and so forth. But once we get to that portion, we'll also need some soapy water. Soapy water is just water mixed with some dish soap that allows it to be a little bit soapy, a little bit sudsy uh, in order to protect the finish on the wheels. After that, we'll get into polishing, but we'll go over those tools later. So we have our wheel set up and before we get started, let's not forget to have some PPE, so some personal protective equipment. Put on some safety glasses just so nothing's flying into your eyes, especially when we're working with metal and little metal shavings. So right here we have a close-up of the area that we're going to start working with. We see it's quite scratched up, quite damaged, 
and we're going to start off with the file. So that's that aluminum oxide bit. So let's start off by getting our rotary tool, our aluminum oxide bit, installing it on nice, securely and safely, and then getting to work. There we go, locked in. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. And then we should be good to go. So far, progress is pretty good. We've gotten down and been able to eliminate a lot of those deeper ridges. And thanks to that, we're able to soon start on the sanding. But I'm gonna grab another circular block to help assist, and we'll go from there. Now when we take a close-up look, it looks much better than it did before. Before it was not in the prettiest shape. Maybe I'll turn off my big light to show a better example. As I was saying, compared to before, it is in much, much better shape. But we still got more to go. Now that we've smoothened out the surface much, much more, we can move on to the sandpaper. These sanding pads are 400 grit that we're gonna start with, and we're gonna make sure it's nice and even and smooth across. And then once it is, we're gonna move up to higher and higher grits to get to the finish that we want. But for now, let's start with 400. I wouldn't recommend starting with anything lower. If you really want, you can, but it'll just be more work because you have to work your way up through the polishing pads. So upon further inspection, it seems that it's not smoothed out enough. So we're gonna go back to the filing using one of the grinding discs. Once we have it more evened out, we'll jump back to the sandpaper. As you can tell, we have been making progress. It is now much, much smoother than it was before. We're not 100% there yet, but I think after a few more rounds of sanding, we should have it to a point where we can get to wet sanding and polishing. At this point, we've got it down to being smooth and we're at the point where we can start sanding with 800 grit. I think I'm at 600 right now. And then we can work our way up to wet sanding in a moment. It's nice and smooth. I can run my finger down, feel no grooves. I will pick up some aluminum, aluminum and we'll go from there. So yeah, making making great progress. Just turn off the light just so it could be a little bit easier for you to see from this angle. If we look from the top, no more curb rash. And luckily it wasn't too, too bad. No bend, no nothing. So we can polish it out and go from there. Here's just another clip with the lighting on for a better view. It is quite reflective since it is just raw aluminum, but it'll look pretty good once it's all done.
Now let's move up to 800 grit. And after this grit, we're gonna move to wet sanding. Wet sanding, we're gonna start with 1000 and we're gonna do it wet. We'll go from there. Well, my battery died, so time to go exchange one so I can keep going. Next step is going to be taking some soapy water and a thousand grit sandpaper. What we're actually going to do is we're going to wet both the sandpaper and we're going to wet the wheel. That's when we're going to start wet sanding. Wet sanding will allow us to polish them to kind of a glossier finish, you could say. A more shiny metal at that point. And then we can proceed from there to kind of have that beautiful polished look, right? This will lead us into polishing the wheel after, but you got to wet sand because we want to get as many imperfections out as we can as well. By hand, you would just be going like that. But because I'm lazy and I have a rotary tool or my 90 degree angle drill, that's what we're going to use. And that's how we're going to get it done today. So now let's move on to 2000 grit. Keep wet sanding, just more and more wet sanding. We love it. Like I've stated before, soapy water, make sure it's nice and wet. And then that's the best way, you know, it's wet. So that's 2000 grit completed. Time to wipe it all down. And it's looking, looking much, much better already. Up next is gonna be 3000 grit. And then after 3000 grit, we'll get to polishing. Lips have no more curb rash. It's super smooth, which is awesome. I'm gonna hit it with 3000 because as we can tell, it's still not perfectly like a mirror like the rest of the inside is. So 3000 wet sand and we go from there. So I think we've completed the stage of wet sanding for today. What I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna pull out the polishing pad now, polish this up. I'm gonna take the wool pad and then the white pad and then we'll see on from there. And if it looks good, we'll keep it. Otherwise, we'll go back to wet sanding. So up next, we're gonna take my wheel polishing one. It's kind of black, but it's typically a white wool pad. And we're gonna use some alloy scrub, which is some metal polish. Uh, Parts of Avatar, we don't have our own yet. But for now, we're gonna utilize silver waxes. And then I'm gonna hit it with the white hard pad. And then after that, if I see it improve, we'll keep going with polishing, going off to softer pads. Otherwise, I'm gonna go and back into wet sanding again. So up next, we finished with the wool pad. Now we're gonna go with the white pad and we're gonna continue polishing. So I already put down some polishing compound. Pad is on, ready to go. And let's proceed. So after doing the wool pad and the other polishing pad, this is where we're at. No more curb rash, it's not perfect, but it's almost a mirror. 
So I'm gonna hit it with this pad one more time and then I brought up another pad that I'm gonna do and we'll go from there. All right, there we go. It's the final product for today. They do need a little bit more polishing to look perfect and they need to be cleaned up. But the main effect is curb rash is gone. Nice, smooth, polished lips once again. So I think that's where we'll end off for tonight. I gotta clean it up, gotta put the wheel back on, but that's how you fix your curb rash. It was quite simple. Um, literally the most important tool I had is my 90 degree uh, angle drill. So it's just a drill, it just makes it easier. Um, you can utilize something else like um, uh, one of those small rupees polishers or other things and wet sanding you can do by hand so it could be done much much easier I just have the that one tool that makes life a lot a lot easier so if you have any other questions leave a comment below if you have questions on where I bought my stuff just look at partsavatar.ca or if it's stuff that we don't have there I'll gladly give you a recommendation in the comments but no more curb rash on my wheel which I am quite happy about and uh, yeah, the Jetta will look good. And main thing I wanted to get that wheel fixed for was for the LZ event, which I will be out to. Uh, that's coming up uh, the 23rd of September. So just about two weeks away. That's where we'll end it. Thank you so much. Check out parsavatar.ca and we'll see you in the next one. Remember, Parse Avatar has got your back. So don't forget to subscribe to the Parse Avatar channel so you don't miss any of these exciting videos.